Welcome everyone to Monday with Masami. And today is November 16th. Um, I feel like, thank God, it's only November 16th. Seriously, it just felt like things were moving a little fast last week. And first week was like a time warp. And then the second week was like, what is going on here? And so I'm kind of glad that it's only halfway halfway through November. So I feel like I could catch a breath. And I'm curious how all of you felt over the weekend, because I certainly felt mm, kind of, it was like a juxtapose, you know, like a very polarizing feelings inside me. The new moon on Saturday was kind of like, I felt amazing with it. But then I woke up and I said to Chris, I said, there's something not going right in my body. And he's like, well, what is it? Can you name it? What are you feeling? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, but something isn't right. And so it took me a little bit all day Saturday. And was it yesterday too, huh, Chris? I woke up yesterday morning too, having a little weirdy, weird old feelings. Um, but I went outside, did my much longer movements yesterday outside. Um, I did, oh, and one of the things that really helped me was to get into a rhythmic movement, um, which I had not been doing so much of, you know, like walking is one of my favorite things to do. But over the summer with so many wildfires we were having in Colorado, I just kind of like didn't want to be outside and a UV rate was so high too. So um, I wasn't walking as much. And so then they kind of got stuck in this mode of not going for a walk. And Chris had been wanting to get this rowing machine for a while and the production had stopped. We finally got our rowing machine and he said, give it a try. So I did. And that gentle motion was so good for me. I was closing my eyes and just rowing. And I imagined that I was rowing through a kind of a placid lake. Um, you know, I spent my teenage years in Minnesota for a couple of years, and that's where my ancestors, some of them came from. So I love the lakes kind of a thing. So I was imagining I was rowing, and that helped me so much. And so that got me thinking further, you know, because I love thinking about what makes me feel different what changed for me and that rhythmic motion is one of the best things you can do for your lymphatic system right so your lymphatic system is everywhere and as you know i've been talking about the lymphatic system a lot the lymphatic system in your brain also but they require rhythmic motion and so i was doing that and in the rowing motion even though you don't have a rowing machine if you could do a rowing motion, even standing up, so you bend your knees and then you reach forward. And as you straighten your knees, you pull your arms back and then reach again. So I was doing this outside this morning without the machine. I was just doing this. And I did it over and over in my rhythmic motions. And that helped me to release some of the congested lymphatic system. And one of the areas that I wanted to quickly mention is very important for your immune system too, is your gut, right? Your gut has this thing called gut-associated lymphoid tissue, okay? So GALT, G-A-L-T. And think of it like that's like a Penn Station in New York City, a Penn Station of your lymphatic system, okay? It's just massive amount of lymphatic system and lymph nodes are there and right on your gut. So what I did for the last several days that I wasn't feeling well, and I started like um, Thursday, I think I was just not feeling right. So I started to do a lot of gentle massage in my gut. So I started massaging my gut lining and then uh, not lining, but you know, towards the, um, from the right to left, I was massaging my colon a lot and right around my small intestine. And um, really I noticed that I was holding on to a lot of fluids in there. And you know, for those of you that want to know, I had a, just like a fantastic poop the next day. So that I knew something was moving through. Okay. 
So I just wanted to mention that the rowing machine, even you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Just maybe Google um, rowing motions or something like that. And really see if you could do some of these movements with the legs and the arms incorporated and use your head forward and come back. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to mention that helped me so much to get grounded and to release some of the puffiness and to have the movements that I needed to have in my colon also. So Chris, you, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, the the um, that galt tissue. This is something we may touch on a little bit today, but um, yeah, I know Masami's going to mention it. But these little patches of this tissue are scattered all throughout your small intestine, and it's so important to keep them moving because so many functions, not only related to digestion, but also to immune function. And I'll I'll let Masami say more about that later, but. The other thing to remember is that our lymphatic system does not have a pump mechanism. So unlike our hearts that pump blood, we do not have a pump in our lymphatic system. So it really relies on other movements to stimulate the, the uh, transition and the movement of uh, lymphatic fluids. Uh, and then you are enjoying it too. Oh yeah, it's a it's a great low key way to um, stimulate all kinds of um, parasympathetic response in the nervous system that that kind of rest and reset kind of feeling, and um, it's very soothing without without having to um, necessarily go into like a, a deep sweat or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I'm starting to know that the, when Chris says, hey, why don't you go and do the rowing machine? I think I know what that means. I think he means, hey, you might just want to like a chill out and release some of your stressors before you come back and, you know, tell me that, that I didn't take the garbage right or something. You know, I think it's his kindest way of saying, hey, Masami, bring it down a little. So I get you, honey. All right. So, and then I wanted to go into, are we, are we okay to go into, let's talk about the three S's first. And then you, you mentioned Chris, and then um, let's go into vitamin D because it's tied together. Okay. Yeah. And so three S's. Sorry, honey, honey. I'm go sorry. Ahead. I'm going to answer a couple, not answer, but thank you everyone. Yes. For all your, um, I know it's coming from a good place when I get a little bit passionate and yeah, the vivid dreams aren't those crazy right now? Oh my gosh. Like every morning I know I'm like in lucid dreams by the end of it, you know? And I'm like, okay, I want to get out of this dream, but I'm so involved in solving this issue <laughs> that I purposely stay in bed to finish my dreams. Very vivid and um, very involved. Like I'm truly involved. And as many of you know, when you can start to not, I wouldn't use the word control your dreams, but you get to like be the director of the dreams, right? That's when you know you are elevating your consciousness. I'm sure you know this, right? That you no longer are being bothered by the dreams, but you are the director of the dreams. And so even you are involved in the dream, you get to say to you as a character and say, hey, maybe you want to take a different approach to this. Why don't you change the outcome of this? You know, so I'm working on that right now. And it's really fun because as much as some dreams are a little bit disturbing or exhausting to me, I'm learning to pull myself back out of it and say, okay, Masami, what would you do in this dream right now? How would you change the outcome of this? So um, hopefully some of you are able to kind of transcend beyond um, just being immersed in the dream and feel like you're in the nightmares. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to mention that. And I think that if you can flush the lymphatic system before you go to bed, like I've been doing, I massage my gut in bed with the bent knees. And I tell Chris that, the, you know, I'm going to be massaging my gut for a while with using my sesame oil and whatever oil is fine. Jojoba oil is great too for some of you. Okay. Um, that, that's what I do. 
for at least, you know, about 10 minutes and it's, it's wonderful. So if you could do that, a lot of times I find those nights that I work on my GALT, so my gut associated lymphoid tissues, I'm able to maybe direct my dreams better than if I don't do those. Okay. So, all right. Now, sorry, Chris, let's go to the three S's. So I want to start by saying everything is connected. I want everyone to remember that everything is connected. So even if we're talking about dreams, and if you're curious to learn more about some of the more intensive dreaming that you might be having that many people are reporting, do a quick search on COVID dreams, because there's actually been a good amount of reporting on that phenomenon. So um, check that out. It has a lot to do with what I'm about to say. And uh, the three S's that we have mentioned, you can write these down. The first one is stress. And that very quickly goes to sugar. And then next is sleep. So all of these three S's profoundly impact our experience on a daily basis. And I'm just gonna break down some really simple things about each one of them just to give us a flavor to the, the conversation today. And uh, we'll go on from there. So the first thing about stress is stress, big or small, doesn't really matter what shape it comes in. Our bodies do not differentiate between one kind of stress or another. So what's important to remember is this can be stress that is real in the moment. It can be stress that you are remembering from a past experience. It can be stress that you're anticipating happening in the future. And it can also be stress that you're imagining. It, it doesn't even have to be something that's real. I mean, it could be like imagining a horror movie that's not even a real thing. So stress is something that <clears throat> comes in all these different forms. But just like the zebra that's getting chased by the lion, our bodies respond to them in the same way. And that same basic way, now there's some more nuance to this than what I'm going to be able to talk about here, but the basic thing that all forms of stress do, either in a, a small, moderate, or extreme dose, is they raise our blood sugar levels. And this is a very, very important thing to understand when it comes to physical health, mental health, spiritual health, relational health, all of these things are so impacted by this relationship. So the mechanism very quickly, so you understand this, is you have a stress, your body responds by releasing stress hormones. I'll just name a couple of the well-known ones like cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol being kind of a, a mid-level stress hormone that our bodies use for health and all kinds of functions. And adrenaline is kind of the big gun. So adrenaline is gonna fire when you go into a more extreme stress. And, and really, stress of any kind is your way of protecting yourself. It's your body's way, your brain's way of protecting yourself from danger and from the threat to your survival. So every time we're going into stress, we're essentially having an emergency energy reaction that fuels fight or flight. And when we go into that fight or flight or freeze, if, if we run out of energy, we have to freeze. But when we go into that mode, it's because those hormones are triggering a surge in blood sugar levels. Their job is to go into our tissues and tell them to release any stored energy that they have. Okay, that's an important thing to know. These stress hormones tell our tissues to release stored energy. And they'll do that, and they'll do it very quickly, and they'll do it much more than we need for the moment at hand. So if it's, a, if it's even a small stress, we'll, re we'll release more emergency fuel just in case, because our bodies are, are wired in such a way that we would prefer, our brain would have us prefer to survive and live, even if it's a little more poorly than today. We would prefer to live to tomorrow instead of die now. So we're wired to release a bigger stress response than the moment even calls for. And that's always going on. 
okay? So what we get into is this, this pattern where uh, humans are basically estimated to be stressed out somewhere around the range of 70% of the time that we're awake, okay? Roughly 70% of the time we're in this, this stress response mode. And so that means that we're constantly releasing excess emergency sugar into our blood, okay? So start seeing if you can make some connections with food there. I'm not gonna go into food so much right now, but if you are in a state where you are increasing your blood sugar levels due to stress already, one of the downsides of stress is it's gonna make you feel tired as your body figures out what to do with all that sugar. And somewhat paradoxically, when you're feeling tired after stress, it's going to push you to get more fuel into your system. And the more we're in that stress mode, the more our bodies get used to burning sugar for, for fuel, the more they're going to start looking for sugar outside of your body to put into it to fuel more stress. So the worst thing that we can get into is a pattern where we're using sugar from the outside to fuel stress induced blood sugar elevations because then what starts to happen is we get worse and worse at re uh, producing that stress response and our bodies have to keep seeking the excess energy from somewhere internally and so what we end up doing is breaking down our muscle tissues in order to fuel the stress response. So we end up cannibalizing our own bodies just so we can continue to have a stress response. Okay. You're muted. I just wanted to quickly add on that, Chris, is that cannibalizing your own body sounds crazy, but that's what's happening to so many people I work with. Um, and it's basically, it's a vicious circle because you want, you start to crave sugar because that's what the body's quickest fuel is. And then, um, body gets kind of stuck in the same rut, right? Same road. And I mentioned this, um, uh, this weekend too, if you're on Mia's call, but it's like a muddy road and you drive on it and then your tire mark stays and then it dries out, right? So next time you go on the same road, you kind of have to follow the same path again because it's, that's where the tire grooves will go into. So the more you eat the sugar, the more your body's gonna use that as a fuel. And then um, basically that's gonna stress your blood sugar. So then you stress again and then so on and so forth. And so this is when maybe in your 40s, 50s, even in 60s, you start to say, you know, I work out all the time, but I can't seem to build my muscles. Okay. That's because you're breaking down your own muscles to feed yourself. Okay, so if you're starting to notice that the, you're not building muscles, no matter how much you work out or you're doing the weight training, doesn't seem to matter anymore. And you just feel like a flabby skin, okay? That's because you're breaking down your own tissues to feed yourself. And this is when what we see is that the people get into spiritual, what do we call it, Chris? Spiritual, What's the spiritual bypassing. Well, spiritual bypassing and spiritual defensiveness. Yeah, defensiveness. That's the one. Defensiveness is a big one that comes up from a lot of people. And they will start to argue with us and say, well, aren't fruits good? Can I just eat nothing but fruits? I'm becoming a fruitarian. And I'm like, well, you can do that for a little while, but fruits are fruits are fruits. Basically, they're sugar. They're sugar, 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 okay? And they're one of the hardest type of sugars because your liver has to deal with fructose and fructose turn into fat, okay, for most cases. I'm not saying, I'm not anti-fruits. In fact, we just had an apple yesterday. Um, but it's not something that you should be eating bags of them like what Chris used to do. Chris used to buy, what, five pound bag apples and he would eat that in one week right? Or two days. I don't know. It was crazy amount. So I just wanted to interject that and say that. So I want you guys to just pause and notice what are some of the stressors you're giving to yourself internally as well as external. There are external stressors that we all talk about. The boss is, you know, being tough on you or, you know, what's going on in media. COVID news is a major stressors for all of us and what's going on with the environment and so on and so forth, right? 
um, those are external stressors. But what are some of the internal stressors that you're continuously feeding? Okay. So just pause and think about some of those. Okay. Sorry, Chris. No, no, we're going to do, we're going to go more in depth on this. We're going to do somewhere in the near future, we're going to do a workshop on burnout because these topics are very much related to that. And it's something that most adults and even a lot of kids these days have direct experience with. And it's a, it's a tricky one to come out of. So we're going to go into this more in depth. But I want to, I want to engage you a little bit on the chat here before I hit the final S. So I, I'm going to do this because I, I had the opportunity today um, to sit with three classes of, of high schoolers and to talk about some of these same topics. So it's kind of funny that this happened today. But I'm going to ask you the same set of questions that I asked them because it was very telling from their answers. And uh, the first one that I, I wanted to know from them is, um, and I'm going to have you do this too, okay? So I'm going to have you on a scale from zero to 10, and let's just see what numbers come up on the chat. But from zero to 10, I want you to say if you're, just give me your, your stress level, zero being no stress and 10 being as much as you can bear. So first question, what was your stress in the last, let's say like three months? Okay, so see a 10, a five, Five, six, ten, eight, seven, seven, eight, six to ten, three, eight, okay, seven, nine. Okay, so I'm seeing some some fairly elevated numbers. Some of you are a little bit lower, okay? I would say the trend is to the probably seven, eight range if we average those all out. So the next question is, was this an increase in your stress level in the last three months? That number you just put up. Okay, just yes or no. Was that an increase in your stress level? Okay. All right, I'm seeing a lot of yeses, but I am seeing, I saw a wee bit there and a slightly, but um, I'm seeing a few no's, which is interesting. So for those of you that said no, were you already feeling like you were at a fairly high stress level? Do you feel like you are generally stressed or generally able to cope with it? Okay, I'm seeing more yeses. Okay. So some of you, the, the majority, you can see there's a pattern here. There's a, there's a majority of us in this group today that is feeling a, an increase in stress over the last few months. And if you haven't felt that and you, you have ways of managing that, congratulations. You're doing something right. Okay? That's something that we all can aspire to is to stay balanced with our, our stress levels. But the reason I'm asking these questions is because I want to know also this question, which is, have you found yourself staying up later than you usually would over these last few months? Okay, seeing yeses and nos. So far, probably about a balance. Okay, so for those of you that are answering yes to this question, or if you've become an insomniac, as Sarah says, um, I want you to put this into the picture of these, these three S's. Okay, so the third S is sleep. So we talked about stress. We've talked about how stress elevates blood sugar. And what happens in terms of sleep, and if you've noticed your st yourself staying up more and more, and, and the other thing to consider is, do you wake up in the morning groggy, grumpy, or do you not get hungry for the first two or three hours after you wake up? Okay. Those are other things to look at. Are you groggy? Are you grumpy? Waking up exhausted, that's what Sharon said. So Sharon, your, your stress level might not have changed emotionally, mentally, but physically, if you're waking up exhausted, that is a red flag for chronic stress. Okay. Not hungry. All right. So a lot of you are feeling this, the exhausted and anxious, waking up, not feeling rested. So these are all absolutely connected to this very predictable pattern that we're talking about here. So when we get that stress load increasing, blood sugar elevating, it's disrupting our normal functions. And a lot of you, oh, Karen, you just, you just predicted my next question, which was I was gonna ask you if you get hungry later in the evening or even right before bed. That's another thing to look at, okay? So if any of you are noticing 
getting hungry later as you're also staying up later. Okay, so I'm seeing a few of you are experiencing that as well. And right before bed, yes. Okay, or even somebody, uh, Janice mentions, not hungry in the morning or evening. You could also experience it that way. Okay, it could be a lack of hunger because you have so much stress energy in your blood that it's, it's impacting your normal appetite. Okay, so good. We're seeing a lot of people are having experiences that you can relate to this pattern. Okay, stress equals elevated blood sugar equals a disruption in your energy patterns, which includes sleep. And Masami has talked a lot about sleep. She's going to talk more about this in her workshop in the talk series that's coming up, the four Bs. And so some of that's going to get reserved for that. But um, what I want you to be thinking about for today, and then I'll stop, is how these three S patterns work together. So sleep is something that you need to clean out your brain. You need it to restore tissues in your body to do healing work. Okay. During the night, your brain will squeeze down like a sponge to get to as much as 60% smaller than it is during its daytime. And one other really interesting thing that happens that that squeezing motion of the brain is almost like a sponge wringing itself out. It's like squeezing out the toxins of the day, all of the thoughts and emotions and neurotransmitters. It's getting rid of those, but they have to go somewhere. So if you're not sleeping, you're not actually detoxing your brain. And Masami's going to say more about that either today or another time. But um, I'll, So I'll go off of that. But one last thing I want to say about sleep is that you need about 70% of the same energy that you use during the day in order to sleep through the night. Okay, I'll say that again. You need about 70% of your daytime awake hours, energy levels, in order to sleep through the night. So if I put that a different way, some of you may have had this experience, but if I put it a different way, it would be you can be too tired, too exhausted to sleep. As strange as that sounds, you can be too tired to actually get a good night of, of sleep and rest. Yeah, wired and tired is what Masami put up. That's the definition of wired and tired there is you lack the energy to actually calm your nervous system back down and let it know that it's not in this survival mode, okay? So those are the three S's in a nutshell. There's a lot more we can say about these, but that will give you a good introduction to how to look at these things together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it back to Asami here. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I had forgotten that, that you need about 70% of your energy during the day, the same amount for to sleep, you know, and, and I know I've been saying that the sleep is an energy rich activity, right? Um, and when you're first starting to incorporate not snacking all the time, right, you know that we're a huge fan of eating three really good meals and not snacking in between. And when you start to do that in the beginning, you wanna be kind of be careful about it because at night, if you don't give yourself a little bit of snack before you go to bed, so this is for you, Samantha, again, is if you don't give yourself a little bit of snack before you go to bed, you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night cold or your body cannot fall back asleep or you start thinking about all kinds of stuff and it'll wake you up between the hours of about two to four or 1 30 to 3 30 somewhere there okay that's a very common time to wake up because and then that's the time that your body temperature might be dropping because your body is trying to adjust to this and it doesn't have enough energy to sleep through and uh, one more thing uh, um two things actually Ariel asked, you know, I'm, I might be sensitive to carbs or something, I think it was, or sugar. Um, so that's really common. We see this a lot with people who start to actually build up intolerance to uh, simple sugar because they eat way too much sugar. Um, and in the sugar, not just, you know, candies and chocolates and cakes and cookies, maybe those are too, but oftentimes we see this with whenever we say, how much sugar are you eating? They somehow omit the um, conversations about fruits and I come to find out that they're eating nothing but fruits all day long as snacks okay that's sugar so we have to remember that um, so intolerance will build up when you eat too much of anything 
Same thing I'm starting to see with so many clients is that um, eat avocados every day. They're, get, they're building up intolerance for avocados. And there's a reason for that. There's a mineral imbalance that happens with too much avocados. So please start giving yourself more variety of foods, okay? And the last thing I wanted to say about the sugar is that if you feel good, okay, you force yourself to go work out, even though you just want to sleep in, you're like, oh, working out is so good for me. I'm just going to go work out. And you go work out and you feel so much better after you've worked out, okay, for about 20 minutes to an hour, you feel like euphoria. Well, congratulations, because you just broke down your thigh muscles and your biceps and then God knows what else, soft tissues and connective tissues, and you broke them down to feed your body. That's why your brain goes, hey, we got glucose in our brains. We feel fantastic. And you get the runner's high or you get the exercise high. But with what cost, right? So everyone that's worked with me, you know this. I, you know, for some of you, I gave you a hallmark that you must not work out for the next three weeks. And then a lot of you would argue with me, say, well, what's wrong with working out? No, maybe go for a gentle walk, okay? Maybe uh, do a little gardening here and there. That's fine. But please stopping these hardcore workouts if you're getting intolerant for sugar, if you can't sleep through the night, you are not hungry in the morning, and then you're having adrenal fatigue, okay? and you know all the symptoms of adrenal fatigue, including hormonal imbalance, then you've got to stop working out so much, okay? So you can come back to your body and then restore your adrenal glands, okay? So that's one of the things I wanted to say, okay? Are we good, Chris, to move forward with that? Okay. Um, and, you know, some of you that answered, you know, I have no stress, da, da, da. You know, I'm, I'm happy because the, we need to have a matchmaking. People that answered seven or 10 need to match up with the people in the threes. And then maybe you could kind of support one another and have a support team here. And at the same time, I have met, and I believe you, if you don't have any stress and in your, you know, you're really taking care of yourself. I think my stress level has been up at some points too, but overall as an empath, I, I like being home you know, and I don't even go to the grocery store. Like I just tell Chris to go get groceries most of the time. So I like it. So in some sense, I'm a lot less stressed than some other time in my history. So um, yeah, sometimes I have to like really get organized. I have to do a little bit of like a breathing technique before I get in the car to go grocery shopping. I mean, that's how much I don't like to be out in the world. So it's been nice for me, you know, maybe stress level has come down in that sense for me. And that's, that's normal, okay? But uh, normal or, uh, you know, maybe common for some of us empaths, okay? So vitamin D, so drum roll, everyone, vitamin D. So I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about take vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, okay? So then I kept working with my private clients and then I kept having about 80% of the time I ended up telling them to take a little break from their vitamin D. And many of you are taking like 10,000 IUs or you know at least minimum of 5,000 IUs. So pretty high dose of vitamin D for months or some of you have been doing it for years. And I kept muscle testing you guys and I kept getting no for about 80% of the time. And I thought, what in the world is going on? So I told Chris, I said, I don't understand because I trust my intuition and my intuition is saying no, like no to some of these people and what's going on because there's so many things. So many people are saying, take vitamin D3, you know, take nothing but vitamin D3. And I said to Chris, but it doesn't feel right to me. So what the heck is going on? So I put it out in the universe. I said, send me articles, send me scientific studies that I can read over the weekend about vitamin D3 because this is making no sense on my left brain to the, my intuition brain. And what we found out that is fascinating, okay? So this is where bio-individual is gonna be important for you to remember. We are bio-individual, even though we're 99% almost identical with each other, okay? There's nothing wrong, wrong with vitamin D3, okay? But there are times we need to just slow down an intake of vitamin D3 because we're only targeting one kind of 
minerals or vitamins or hormones and not looking at the relationships with other things, okay? Um, vitamin D is, by the way, it's more of a hormone than a vitamins, okay? So that's number one you wanna remember. And you don't wanna just blindly start taking nothing but crazy amount of vitamin D3 amount because vitamin D will not become an activated form and be absorbed if you don't have enough magnesium. And guess who has magnesium these days? Almost nobody, okay? So if you're not able to take magnesium and the magnesium causes you to have diarrhea, then your absorption of magnesium has dropped, okay? Or you've been addicted to taking magnesium so you can relieve your constipation and you've been using it to poop for years and years, okay, that also means your absorption level for uh, magnesium has come down. And if you don't have adequate magnesium, vitamin D cannot do its job, okay? And when you have excess vitamin D because it's not showing up in your serum test, so your doctor says you have a very low vitamin D level, here's your vitamin D, start taking them. By the way, you should always take vitamin D in the liquid form, not in a capsule form, okay? Because it's a hormone-like and you should do it sublingually. Okay, so vitamin D, when you start to just pump in the vitamin D without balancing the magnesium, what Chris and I have seen with most people is that we get into um, calcium, too much calcium in your tissues. So this is when you start to get plaque. This is when you start to get kidney stones. This is when you start to get arthritic in your joints and you get bursitis and then cataracts. Those are all excess calcium symptoms. So you can't just blindly take vitamin D like crazy without looking at the whole picture. So I'm going to pause right there. Chris, you want to add anything? Yeah, I'm, I was going to say there, um, Anne just asked a really good question, but before we jump to the questions, we have a couple of the things that we would want to just run by everybody and remind everyone of some announcements of things coming up. Uh, First of all, you may be aware of this, maybe you've already signed up, but uh, Masami is appearing on the Shift Networks Summit, the Energy Medicine and Healing Summit this Friday. So if you haven't yet signed up for that, you can find the uh, link at masamikavi.com and you'll want to type that into the navigation bar, not the search bar. Okay, so masamikavi.com. And then the other thing to announce is that the special offer for the four B's and the bundle with the energy, energy medicine toolkit, that special pricing is going to end on Thursday, the 19th. So if you have not taken advantage of that, it is going to end on Thursday and it will not be there anymore. So um, just please note that if you've been on the fence and you've been thinking about it, please do that before Thursday because it will not be available after that. And then there is one more final thing that I'll let Masami mention. Yeah, but okay, I'm gonna go back to the D for a moment. Okay? Oh, let's take it. Let's take it after this. I want to just just do the the announcement about what you wanted to offer. All and right. Let's do questions, and let's just do okay. questions. Thursday, yeah, everyone, the price is gonna go up. Um, the John Burgos' special price is um, will be over ninety seven dollars for. What over two hours of meditation and four live sessions, one is going to go into a different price, higher price. So please sign up. And I decided that for Thanksgiving to, to give you guys thank you gifts, I'm going to choose five people out of uh, the people that have signed up for that course, as well as if you signed up for my private since November. So if you bought it after October 20th um, and then you bought the privates, then I'm going to put your name in it too. So if you bought the privates and also the course, you get um, two times chance of winning this. But I'm going to do, I haven't done this for a long time. And you know, some of you have been asking for it. It's the small group. So out of the um, people that have signed up, I'm going to choose five people, five lucky people get to do the small group session with me. And if any of you have done a small group, maybe put it on the chat, how, you know, if you liked it, Thumbs up for me because um, I love I love doing a small group. It's um it's it's really intense for me because I'm on the call for like two and a half hours or longer, and I'm in that zone for so long that I have to take a break from it. But 
I decided I'm going to give five people that um, small group two and a half hours or so, uh, one, you know, almost one-on-one -on -one because you get to have about 20 to 25 minutes to talk just with me. And as a group synergy goes, it's amazing. Like six of us learn so much from each other and there's so much like interactions in the other person's questions. So that's, I decided to do that. So anyway, I'm going to announce who the winners are. Is it next week I'm going to announce it or maybe after Thanksgiving or I'm, I'm going to announce them. So please support me if you want to continue for me to do the Monday with Masami too. This is how you can support me. Instead. Okay. And, and we're seeing a lot of people that have done the small group come on. And thank you for those comments. Just bring on the small group, says Sue. And uh, we had several others comment as well. So that'll right. be a, so we'll do a, a drawing basically to yeah. decide on the names for that. So more information to come, but let's swing back to... Okay. So I'm coming back to the D yeah. okay. because I really, everyone, why am I having such an intuitive, like gut feeling that's like no to the vitamin D that's because some of you are not taking it with magnesium and then Blake mentioned, hi Blake. So good to see you. <laughs> okay. So Blake mentioned that the um, K2 is also important. So K2 and vitamin D are kind of antagonistic with each other. Okay. So if you have too much calcification going on, so if you're starting to notice that you have bursitis or you've got little weird joints, you know, like bone growth on your wrist or bottom of your heel or cataracts, you know, like having eye issues, um, any kind of inflammatory bone related issues, then you need to look at that might be too much D going in there without enough magnesium, magnesium. And also you don't have enough K2 to buffer that. Okay. So you need to maybe take a little bit of K2 instead. And also the 80% of people who we work with, okay, tend to be in the slow metabolic group. How do we know that? We figure that out through the hair tissue mineral analysis that we do, right? We call HTMA testing. And when we get the hair tissue samples, what we see with the slow metabolic rate people is that they tend to have a high level calcium in the tissue, okay? High level. And you don't want to have a high level calcium tissues because calcium should be inside your teeth and inside your bones not floating around in your tissues, okay? So I recommend you go maybe in and out of the vitamin D and obviously get your serum tested for vitamin D level, but it's not always gonna be exact. So I would go with more symptoms. Are you getting more plaque? Okay, well, that means you got a little bit of calcification happening. I get that sometimes. A couple times a year, I get like a plaquey teeth and I go, God, I just can't brush my teeth enough. That's when I'm like, oh crap, you know, I need to get the calcium back into my bones. So I up my magnesium first, okay? And then I might look into the sunshine. I might look into fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, okay? And also last thing I wanted to say is that if you're a slow metabolic type, which are the people that are not very hungry in the morning, they tend to be kind of exhausted throughout the day, Okay, so we're kind of describing 80% of many of you can't seem to lose the weight around the waist and butt and, you know, thighs area. Uh, you're starting to feel um, like you're just aging kind of quickly, things like that. Okay, then I might also look into vitamin A, vitamin A, not just D, but A, also fat soluble vitamin. Okay. Don't overdo on the A because it can get kind of toxic if you overdo it, but most people never get to the toxic level, okay? So there's not a huge fear around it, but I would maybe go in and out of D and A, and depending on your symptoms, you might need to introduce K2, okay? So I think I'm done talking about those. And just, just some of the you know um, uh, symptoms, right? Tartar, teeth tartar, okay? Um, arthritis, bursitis, kidney stones, and cata cataracts. Okay. All right. Anything? I was going to just add to that. One of the things that we have to be really cautious about, and this is where we as individual people 
need to not only be critical consumers, but we need to be critical thinkers. And we have a pattern in our medical system and in our culture that has trained us to look for silver bullets. Okay, we have a tendency to look for the one true thing, the one perfect cure for all of our ills. It doesn't exist or somebody would have already found it and patented it and you know, we would all know it. Okay, so that's not how things work. And so what we have to remember is for all of us that are kind of putting our hopes onto one nutrient or one vitamin, one mineral as the thing that's going to cure us and fix us, what we have to remember is every vitamin, every mineral works in concert with and often in opposition to the other minerals and vitamins. Okay? So I said at the beginning when I started talking about those three S's that um, if, you are, if you are looking at um, these different uh, patterns, these different influences that are affecting you from uh, minerals and vitamins, you have to consider how they're impacting each other. Okay. And so Masami just put up to answer the questions about vitamin A, that approximately 12,000 IUs of vitamin A is safe for most adults. Okay. So. And, um, and uh, vitamin A gets used up when you're fighting virus. Okay. And I want you to all to just kind of pause and know, right, that we're exposed to all kinds of different viruses every single day, every single day. It's not just COVID, it's all kinds. And I think we've got to come out of this mindset that um, we are trying to find a sing, you know, single thing or the silver bullet for something, okay? That kind of thinking has gotten, uh, gotten us into this mess also. Okay, so there are two kinds of thinking that you might want to write it down. One is the terrain theory, and the other one is called germ theory. Okay, and I've talked about this many times in different calls. Terrain is to take care of your entire body. So no matter how much you get beautiful seeds and you know plants to plant for your summer veggies or summer flowers or whatever, if your garden soil has been depleted of all the minerals and depleted of what it needs, your seeds are not gonna germinate and it's not gonna grow. Your plants are gonna dry up and be gone, okay? So what I want you to make sure you do is to cultivate much better soil inside. And what, like I said, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So you've gotta start addressing your gut, okay? gut associated lymphoid tissue and also the lining of the gut okay you got to feed the right things and the germ theory is to get so tunnel visioned about covid-19 and nothing else okay that's when we're creating these vaccine vaccinations and things like that that i'm not going to go into the vaccine conversations in the public right now i have my own opinions but I don't know exactly what that kind of a tunnel vision work is going to create in the long run, okay? I have my theory on it, but what I'm going to do is to, instead of focus so much on a singular virus or germ, I'm going to focus on my terrain instead. So if you could kind of stand back and look at the situation from a 30,000 foot, what can I do on the bigger picture? So this means you better be working on those three S's, ASAP. You know, today we were going to talk about other things, maybe, you know, a little more inspirational, but we we're like, you know what, COVID cases in the United States is, and all across the world is going up. We need to start to talk about this a little bit more so we can be here to support you through this journey and so we can support one another. Anything, Chris? Yeah, I, I want to move in a slightly different direction, but springing off of what you said first is that the the thing that you'll hear us coming back to again and again is that to to reach these i don't know if you want to call them goals or targets or aspirations that we have in life about our health and spirituality and all these other things that we value it really requires us to take care of our whole self and it's really easy to skip over the body. It's really easy to skip over 
um, or, obs or, or contrasting with skipping it, we can just obsess about having a perfect uh, nutrient, um, you know, portfolio that we're ingesting and, and obsessing and being a perfectionist about that, but there's no joy in that either. And so there's really, what we're talking about is coming back to a place of balance and a place of really carefully loving our bodies, loving our lives, taking care of, of what's in us and what's around us. And um, as we come toward the end of this call, I wanted to, the, the little departure I wanted to make is uh, I wanted to say thank you to Sue for your, your very lovely comment um, about Masami and me together. And I, what I want to say to that um, is that, you know, what you see in us together is, is the product of, I, I would say two things. One is we've gone through the rocks. I mean, we have really, really hit the rocks uh, together and individually. And it is because we had those really tough experiences um, through injury, through all of the, the downside of recovery and mental health issues that result from that, all of the things that, that are the, the essence of what we're talking about every time we get on. We've been through that and we have come through it in a way that we've really learned to appreciate not only who we are and how our bodies work and how amazing this whole world is and, and our organism is part of it, but we've also really appreciated each other. And so a lot of what you're seeing is also our love for each other because I can tell all of you, I would not be here today if not for this fiery little woman that gets up in front of us and does this every week. Okay. I wouldn't be here. I probably would not be here on this earth. And so, um, I give Masami most of the credit for me being here. I had to do a lot of my own work, but, uh, she, she gave me the ability and the platform to do that. So I want to, I want to just read a quick poem. Um, and a couple of thoughts, and this might be a good way to wind up. I know Masami could easily open another tangent up. I can see it on her face. She's got more content ready to roll out, but we're also coming up to the end of the hour. And so um, I wanna just read this. I opened up uh, one of my favorite books today. Just thought I'd see what inspiration came in. It's a poem from Meister Eckhart. So if you're not familiar with him, he was, I believe, an 11th century mystic uh, from Germany. And uh, this poem is called The Hope of Loving. Okay, The Hope of Loving. He says, what keeps us alive? What allows us to endure? I think it is the hope of loving of, or of being loved. I think it is the hope of loving or being loved. I heard a fable once about the sun going on a journey to find its source and how the moon wept without her lover's warm gaze. We weep when light does not reach our hearts. We weep when light does not reach our hearts. We wither like fields if someone close does not rain their kindness upon us. We wither like fields if someone close does not rain their kindness upon us. So Meister Eckhart's words really struck me today. And I think that in the midst of all of the strain and stress and those three S's and all these things that we are talking about, I want to just, I have two more short lines I want to share because they're, they're some of my favorite things and they're very simple. One of them is by Ian McLaren, who said, be kind. Everyone you meet is carrying a heavy burden. Okay. Just remember that right now in this time, in the midst of everything going on, be kind. Everyone you meet is carrying a heavy burden. And finally, from Henry James, who couldn't have said it more simply, three things in life are important. 
Okay, three things in life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. So let kindness be our guide because if we can be kind to ourselves, we can find a way to be kind to others and we can find that connection and we can find our way back to hoping for that light that we feel like we might be missing. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Hmm. Man, you didn't share that with me before, so you made me cry. Uh, the, the second one was a big one for me. It's, I feel, I feel the pain that this earth is shedding as well as all of us are shedding. So, you know, it is important, everyone, we focus on your, when you first read the first one, the poem, I thought that summarizes the terrain theory. <laughs> That's what the terrain means. That you don't get so tunnel visioned and how do I get out of this mess, but step back and really see the beauty and love around you and within you. And then the two other ones that you read are ways to cultivate your terrain. To continue to cultivate that. Um, yeah, thank you, Chris, for sharing that. It, it's um, it's um, speechless. Hey, you made me speechless, so that's pretty good. That's really good. I'll, I'll use that opportunity to read one last comment, and then maybe we can wrap up today. Um, I like what you said, Tracy, about these Monday meetings are like vitamins for my soul. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, that's awesome. And it's balanced between D3 and magnesium and K2 and calcium. I'm sure it's balanced. Okay. And so, you know, one, la one last thing, everyone, I just want to mention is that as I've been saying, please live with seasonal changes. Please eat differently as the season changes, right? Your vitamins and minerals have to change also. Okay because they're also food. So if you've been doing the same protocol for last six years, okay, or even six months, it's time for you to change it up a little bit. Pay attention to some of the symptoms that are coming up, okay? And I know I shouldn't give you more information, but one little last thing about the dream. If those of you cannot remember dreams, okay, that means you're low on B6. All right. If you can't remember dreams, you're low on B6. So start taking them and don't ask me how much, because how would I know if you remember your dreams? You take them so you can start to remember your dreams. Then you can back it off. So I don't know the answers. Okay. You know your own answers within your body. Okay. Oh, I just love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, I know I'm gonna wrap up, but guess what, everyone? The Shift Network contacted me again, and they want me on the breathing summit that's gonna go on in January. So um, I'm gonna get the interview mid -ne next month, and so <laughs> I hope they don't get sick of me, but this Friday is my recording. I'm really nervous, even though that recording already happened two months ago. I'm so nervous. So, so I don't know I even going to watch myself, but if you can watch me on Friday the 20th and just send good, good energy towards that interview that was already done two, uh, two months ago. But you know what? We're, time is not linear, right? So, all right. <laughs> so I'll be on next week again, and we'll take a couple weeks off over the Thanksgiving and during my programs, but we will do this as long as we can. So sending all of you love. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Lots of love to all of you. Bye.